What's up, guys? Welcome back to another daily Bible reading snapshot. Today, we're looking at Numbers 14, and Numbers 14 is one of the most famous chapters in the book because it's when a lot of the people decide that they are not going to follow Moses anymore. It's one of the worst chapters in all the Bible because people start to leave and say, I'm not following Moses anymore. Let's find a new leader. Let's, let's be done with Moses. And now, while they do that, God observes this rebellion, and he says, you know what? I'm going to be done with these people. I'm going to be done with this nation of Israel. I'm going to be done with them. So he tells Moses and Aaron all this, and Moses goes and talks to God, and he prays something back to God that God already said to him. Notice in chapter 14, verse 18, Moses says to God, You said you were a the Lord, the Lord slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty. And he goes on. This is a quotation of Exodus 34, 6 and 7. Moses remembers what God said about himself and said, God, please don't abandon these people, even though they deserve it. Don't abandon them because you are God of steadfast love. And all the nations are going to look at these people and they're going to say, oh yeah, their God was not powerful enough to bring them into the land. Please be good to them for your sake. And God says, okay, I will be. But he promises judgment. And he says to these people, especially those spies, those people that went into the land and said that God could not take the land, He's going to kill all of those people except for two. One of them is named Caleb. It says Caleb here. I just like this verse. It stood out to me as as we read. It says, But my servant Caleb, this is verse 24, Because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. I like how it says that. He had a different spirit. Just different. Something about him was different because he trusted God. That's ultimately what made him different. Joshua was also different than these these Israelites, and he was actually going to be the one who led the people in. Caleb is not going to be the leader who leads other people in, but he is going to be someone who takes possession of the land, him and his family. And it says all of those who went into the land and didn't trust God, so everyone but Joshua and Caleb here, all those 10 spies, they died in this plague. And a lot of other people died too. So Chapter 14, it's a highlight chapter, not for good reasons, but mainly for bad reasons. People didn't want to follow God, and they didn't want to obey Him. Now, chapter 15 is about these sacrifices and about what they were supposed to do for their unintentional sins and for some of their intentional sins. And I I think there's an interesting verse right here at the end. Verse 39, it says, It shall be a tassel for you, like this this thing they're supposed to have around their face, right? It should be a tassel on each corner. Uh, is for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So God said, I want you to wear this item of clothing so that you'll remember my commands. And it says, I want you to remember the commandments of the Lord and to do them, not to follow after your own heart and your own eyes. Okay, That is interesting because in our culture, we're taught so much to follow our hearts and to go after whatever our eyes want. It's interesting here that God says, no, no, no. Don't do that because that's what you're inclined to do. You're inclined to follow after your own heart and your own eyes. You need to follow after my rules, my Bible. And that's really what we should be thinking of today. We need to follow after God's rules and God's commandments and God's word. We need to follow God ultimately because when we follow ourselves and our own hearts and our own thoughts and our own eyes, whatever we want, we're going to get ourselves into trouble. God knows best for us and he says here, follow my word. Don't follow your own heart. So that's a helpful lesson today from the book of Numbers because we see the damage that comes upon the people when they follow their own hearts. Their own hearts said, I'm not going to trust God. I don't trust that we can go into the land. Let's go back to Egypt. God says, no, you need to follow me. We need to follow God as well today too. So that's our Old Testament reading today. Let's turn to the New Testament. We're still today in the book of Mark, looking at Mark chapter 6, the beginning of this chapter, first 32 verses. So this is... Mark 6, 1 to 32, we see how Jesus goes into his own hometown of Nazareth and he's not embraced. You would think that if any town would embrace Jesus, it would be Nazareth, but it wasn't. They did not obey God. They did not submit to Jesus and they didn't believe in him. And part of the problem was they had familiarity with Jesus. They knew who he was. And because they already had a, an idea in their mind, a preconception or a, or a presupposition or whatever you want to call it, they had that in their brain about Jesus they wouldn't embrace him as the Lord and as the Savior and as the boss. Um, And although people today um, 
don't grow up with Jesus in the sense that they didn't grow up in the same hometown. You might not have grown up in Nazareth unless you're a random person from Nazareth watching this video, then maybe you did. But the, the point is you didn't grow up with Jesus in that sense. But today, a lot of people grow up with Jesus and have preconceived notions of who Jesus is. And then when we read his word and see who he is, we think, I don't want to obey that Jesus. I don't want to submit to him. I don't want to trust him because of your preconceived notions about Jesus. When we go to the word, we need to... Um, put those aside and we need to say, well, what does God's word say about him? What are we supposed to do? What does Jesus say about himself? Uh, and really the people in Nazareth, if they would have listened to Jesus, they would have repented and experienced eternal life. But uh, most of them didn't. Another thing we see here is the death of John the Baptist, which happens when Herod, an evil king, imprisons John the Baptist for speaking out against his sin. So John the Baptist speaks out against Herod's sin. Then John the Baptist is killed because of his his boldness and we see the backstory here um herod had a party herod got drunk herod did something stupid and promised to give his um, his his wife's daughter his really his uh, stepdaughter anything that she wanted and she asked for john the baptist's head now I think this story of Herod is interesting because if he would have repented when John preached before, he never would have been in this situation. But because he didn't repent that time, that led to more sin and more sin and more sin. Not only was it a sin for Herod to reject what John the Baptist taught initially, he continued in his sin that he was called out for, and eventually his sin got so bad that even that added another sin of killing John the Baptist. The idea is this, when we sin, and when we're confronted with that sin, we need to turn from it. Because if not, it will just lead to one sin after another, and it will just get bigger and worse, and it will turn into a, a complete disaster when we don't repent of our sin. And that's what happens to Herod here. So when we're confronted with our sin, we need to make sure that we repent. Just like the Israelites in the book of Numbers today, um, they were confronted with their sin of complaining. They definitely should have turned away from that, but they kept on complaining, and that led to more bad things. Same thing's true today. We don't repent. If we don't repent of our sin when we're confronted, it'll just lead to worse and worse things in our life, and also worse punishment that we deserve uh, from God for that. So we need to repent when we're confronted. So that's today's daily Bible reading. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for another one.